Well, you know, in life, there are just some things that you just know. Some things that are deep within you. And your knowing is very strong. It's not a belief because a belief, well, it can be shrouded with an air of doubt. A belief that also says, I've got to hold on to trust. I've got to hold on to something to really believe this. But there's something different about knowing. Knowing is an internal conviction, something that grabs you so much that you know that you know that you know. It comes to a place where we are so confident that it's moved beyond any kind of sense of hope, which is saying, maybe, I hope, I hope, uh, it would be nice. Or trusting, which says, I'm holding on to a belief or moving then finally to a confidence of knowing that says, I have this ultimate confidence, this perfect peace, a rest. It's like this. I don't believe I can ride a bike. I know I can ride a bike. Now, I may not have ridden a bike for quite some time. In fact, I can't even imagine. Remember the last time I was on a bike? It's been quite some time, but you know what? I know if you brought a bike in right now, I would know how to ride it. That's the sense of knowing. Something you know deep within you. You don't even question it. You don't wonder about it. You just have a great peace and an assurance, a confidence deep within you that says, you know what? I can do this. I know this. So it is on Sundays as we share this phrase, we know. We know, and we know that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience in this world. And how important it is that we say this over and over again because it seems to affirm for us, begins to call forth a remembrance, a recall that says, yes, this is what we know. And isn't it wonderful to know? Isn't it wonderful to have that kind of confidence? Say, I know. Well, this is a place. This is a place where we know, where we begin to live out that wonderful understanding, that confidence that we have, that we are spiritual beings. And we profess this week after week, and this is then how we live. Because we go from this place, having gathered together as a spiritual being, even though we may see bodies in this room, we really recognize the soul, the spirit of one another. And we're in communion with that. We're celebrating with one another the very essence of who you are. And as we come together as a body of believers, it's not just body against body as we shake hands or give a hug. That's not what it's all about. But it's here being spiritual, uh, realizing that spiritual people are that soul, that essence of the divine within us. It's an important from time to time to sort of take an inventory of what are the things you know. Well, today as we're going on through that inventory of things, we're saying this is the one thing that we're sure of. We know that we're a spiritual being in a physical world. We're not that physical being struggling and trying to have this spiritual life. We realize we are, in essence, a spiritual being. We are a soul. And that soul is here to experience the divine. You wonder why your soul has come to this world? Well, it's come for that sense of experience. To say, I want to taste chocolate, shall we say. Where the soul is saying, in essence, I want to taste the things of God. I want to taste them in this physical realm. I want to experience them. For the spirit now is tied in with the physical through the body. And that soul then says, now I can practice. I can experience. I can live out these things. That which I really am in essence, I can do it in the physical. So the a beautiful thing that we don't have to try to be spiritual. Because we are spiritual. That's who you are. We don't have to try. There's not an effort. Oh, you're trying to put on some airs to be spiritual. It's the recognition that, wait a minute, that's all I am. I am this spiritual. I am this soul. I am this spiritual being. It's a big shift in our consciousness, in our thinking in a world. Because we quite often are so caught up with thinking just about the physical. We look in the mirror and we say, well, this is who I am. I see the reflection of who I am. I see it clearly. I am this physical body. Oh, but we have to look deeper within and acknowledge that we're created in God's image and likeness. That is God is spirit. And that likeness and image is that of spirit, of divine essence within us. So when you say spiritual, sometimes, wait a minute, a lot of people in the world today say, what, you're telling me you're spiritual? Because we've known a lot of people said, I'm really spiritual. And it's almost like they're speaking a sort of, arrogance. You know, I'm better than you. 
I'm, I'm uh, more knowledgeable than you because I'm really spiritual. But that's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking simply about that we've come here as a people who understand we know who we are. City of Light is big on people knowing their authentic self. We want you to know this is who you really are, your authentic self. We want people to, to love themselves as who they are. I am not this body. I am so much more than this body. And I need to love myself for who I really am. And we're inviting you to do the same. Love yourself for who you really are. More than this body, although this is a wonderful creation that God has given each and every one of us, there's something so much more. It's that eternal life that we're living, that the soul is ongoing. So say it with me. I am a soul. I am a spiritual being. Now say it with confidence. I am a soul. I am a spiritual being. This we know. This is what I'm saying is we know this to be our truth, for this is how we're living in the world. This is how City of Light as a body of believers is operating, how we move within the world, not as physical beings, but as people recognizing our spirituality and that we are spiritual beings. Let me tell you this. It's time for us all to come out of the closet. And I'm not just talking LGBT people. I'm talking about everyone. It's time to come out of the closet with this truth. It says, I know I'm a spiritual being, and I live from that perspective. I want the world to know this, that this is my truth. Well, how do we know? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm really glad you asked this question because Jesus said in the text that we read today from John 17, 14 through 16, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. He's talking about his disciples, his followers. For they're not of the world any more than I'm of the world. You see, Jesus acknowledged, I'm not of this world. I'm a spiritual being in this world. And I've shared this good word. I've taught this to my disciples. And they also are awakening and realizing that they are not of this world. That we are spiritual beings passing through. Sort of like we've stopped in this journey of life to take a little vacation in this time called this lifetime of this 90 to 100 years that we plan to live on this planet, that we go through the journey here to experience all the things that we go through, but we're moving on. We were, we are, and we will be, and that's the beautiful understanding of our spiritual essence of who we are as spiritual beings. We may feel that sometimes we're a stranger in a strange land because we're living in this world as divine creations. We're living in this world and we think, wait a minute, all around me in this physical world, I can see all this sense of lack and separation. And boy, have we seen it this past week. A world of separation where people are saying, you know, I don't like you. You're not any part of me. We don't have any commonalities. We shouldn't be together. I want to destroy you. I want to get rid of you. I'm going to kill you. And on goes this escalated kind of consciousness that's in the world of separation, of thinking that somehow, even though we're a soul, that we're, in, we're somehow separated. Oh, but we're not. We're all one in this wonderful divine world. Let me explain it to you. It's simply like this. Let's pretend like this bottle is full of ocean water, filled with ocean water. And we throw it out into the ocean, and it's floating along on the water. It's a bottle filled with ocean water in the ocean. But so often people are thinking differently. They're thinking, wait a minute, I'm just a physical being. I'm this body. I'm a human. That's who I really am in a spiritual world. But no, you're like this bottle. And inside is the ocean water floating in the ocean. We sometimes forget that within is the ocean while we're floating in the ocean. Within, the body is the same that's without. And so it's understanding in our spiritual lives that we may say, wait a minute, all I see is the bottle. All I think about is the bottle. But, oh, but what's inside the bottle? The ocean. What's outside the bottle? The ocean. What's all around us, in us, and through us? The divine. God. God is in us. God is flowing through us. God is all around us. Within us is this wonderful divine. 
Within us is the ocean, and we are just this in this bottle, this container, this physical being that's floating, shall we say, in the spirit of the divine all around us, in us, and through us. Thus we forget we need to refocus our lives to understanding, wait a minute, I am so much more than this physical being. So we speak this truth each Sunday to help us remember and to reconnect. We know this because we've experienced it from the spiritual life that we live. We know we're living in a spiritual world. We are, you know, just embracing this whole thing because that which we do and operate in is spiritual unfolding all around us. Quite often we look and say, wait a minute, it doesn't work in the physical. But we know it works in the spiritual. Okay. Think about that for a moment. In my life, I'll have to say, when I came out, my mother said, you know, honey, you'll never find someone to love you. She said, I think they only want you when you're young and you're not all that young anymore. Thank you, mom. I'll always remember those words. You'll never find someone. You'll never. And whoa, well, behold, I found someone who loves me for 19 years. We've been together in the spiritual realm of my believing. I know that God was making a way and unfolding this wonderful pathway where I meet, might meet someone. It's interesting because in my family's world, we are not big on education. My parents never even finished high school. They were eighth grade dropouts. They were immigrants coming into America, and education wasn't a big thing. And in our conversations as a family, they said, you know, well, we didn't even think that you would maybe even finish high school. We didn't even think about college. We didn't think, my parents were the kind who said, are you thinking of Harvard? Are you thinking of Yale? Where might you go for college? That wasn't even in their thought process. When I told them I wanted to go to school, they were like, what? School? You can't go to school. How will we go to school? You'll never be able to afford school. We can't afford school. College isn't an opportunity for you. Yet, lo and behold, I prayed and I began to believe, and I graduated from a seminary. And not only that, I graduated with a doctorate. And not only that, I graduated with a second doctorate. I'm a double D. There we go. Uh, <laughs> so when we look around and we say, wait a minute, all things are possible. You may think for a moment, for a while, like, wait a minute. What is this all about? But in the spiritual realm, when we believe, we know that that which the naysayers may never be possible happen. Robert and I wanted to sell our house in Jefferson Park. We had remodeled this home. We had invested a lot. We were looking for top dollar in the sale. The price that we were listing at, the neighbors all said, it'll never happen. You could never sell a house for that price. There's no comps. No one has ever sold a house in Jefferson Park for that kind of price. Even though it may be worth it, it's not possible. It will never happen for you. And so we began to pray. And as we prayed, God brought in someone who had a cash offer for top dollar and their no comps were necessary. You see, we then changed the whole neighborhood with that, where people then began to say, wait a minute. All this world of naysayers, of people saying, never, 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 you'll never. We know that we're spiritual beings, and we live in a world of overcoming the never-sayers. The people who constantly say it can't be possible. Why? Because we dwell in the world of the spiritual, where we see there are unlimited possibilities for our lives. I've given you three examples. I know that you probably, every one of you can sit down here and give the, I can tell you three things where people said it would never happen, and you did it. It never was possible, and you did it. Through the power and presence of God, those things that were seen to be limitations were now removed from your life, and you were liberated and set free. You see, that's us understanding. We live in a spiritual world. We live from a spiritual perspective. It changes all, everything about us within our life, because those who have forgotten this are merely sleepwalkers in this journey. They're oblivious to the spiritual and they're holding on to the physical world around them. So what they constantly say is, all I see is my limitation. All I see is this. And I have people who constantly say to me, Pastor, I can't afford to give because I'm on a fixed income. You just expressed your limitation. You just said, I live in the realm of limitations, of boundaries. Well, but you don't know. My check is only so much or my... Uh, 
disability check or my social security or whatever it may be that's coming to me. It's a fixed amount and that's it. And so we've just told God, I'm sorry, I'm fixed. I can't move. I can't make any changes. But when we live from the spiritual, we say all things are possible. And we open our lives to that unexpected income that comes to our lives in different shapes and forms for the blessings of God are ever fluid within our world. And we may not always be conscious that the Spirit has been blessing us in infinite ways, small ways, and then we begin to add them up and realize, whoa, I didn't realize I found money in my pocket. I found a, a, a check was sent to me or I found uh, someone took me out to dinner or I've, all these unexpected income ways that come to our lives that say we're in divine flow. We don't live in the realm of limitation. We live in a realm of possibilities in the spiritual and how important it is that. You see, one of the problems is the primary cause of our suffering in our world is that we've lost sight of our divinity. We've lost sight of our spiritual origin. We've lost sight that we are created in the image and likeness of God. And that means we're created in an image of infinite possibility. There are no limitations for you. Wow. Shift our thinking to begin to, wait a minute, no limitations for me? Not in the realm of the divine. All things are possible, the scripture says. We say all things, but mm, not all, but all things, but not really all. And so we argue with ourselves over and over again as we attach limitation to those passages of Scripture that have been teaching us from the beginning of time. Everything is possible in its spiritual realm, in the realm of God. God is opening doors and making a way when there seems to be no way. We forget that we're created to be an heir to all the good of God. That means that you are the child of God and everything that is the Father's is yours. We forget that and we lose sight of this. And so we begin to create this image of just the physical limitations of this world around us. We forget that we're part of this wonderful family of God. Years ago when I was a little kid, my sister pulled me aside to tell me that I wasn't part of the family. She said, you don't look like mother. You don't look like dad. You're probably adopted. You don't fit in here. You're not part of our family. I was kind of devastated. Here's my sister, older and wiser, of course, and I thought for sure that she knew something that maybe I didn't. And so with her information, suddenly I began to feel this feeling of separation. I don't belong in this family. You're right. I looked in the mirror as a little kid and said, I don't look like my dad. Of course, at four years old, I didn't look like my father at all. You know, And uh, I don't look like my mother either. And I was like, Maybe I don't belong here. And suddenly this overwhelming feeling that says, I have doubts and fears and questions. And I feel so removed from this family. And then my mother sat me down and said, shame on your sister for trying to fill you with that baloney. You're part of the family. I want to tell you this. What's happened in our spiritual lives is someone's told us, you're not part of the family. You're not part of the family of God. You don't fit here. You don't look like God. You don't do these kind of things. You're not fit in the image and the likeness. And we believe this malarkey. And we believe this story. And we took it in and we somehow began to believe and feel that somehow we are separated from all the goodness that is of God. The world is trying to get us to think that we're not part of this family. And then so what happens is we now have these feelings then of separation and fear and doubt. And then on top of it, we forget that as spiritual beings, we've been given dominion, authority. That's right. How many of you read the creation stories, Genesis 1 and 2? Sometimes we read them and think, eh, skip over them. But did you notice there's a key phrase? God gave Adam and Eve dominion and authority to name everything. That's right. You have the dominion and authority to name everything. That means every experience, every day, you get to name it. You have the authority in the spirit and presence of God to say, I name today a great day. I name today a perfect day. I name my experience with others full of love. And I name that when I'm going through a journey of great abundance and prosperity, I name it. And I have the authority and the dominion to now shape the day 
from that perspective of what I call it, what I name it. Because in thought, that which we think, so it creates. That which we name was what manifests in our world today. When you name like, oh, I'm poor, I'm stupid, I'm lazy, I'm too fat. All those kind of things, you know what? You just named it and you called it and you're right. You're absolutely true. And those things begin to unfold for you even more and more. But how about we shift and recognize our authority and our dominion and our rights to name, I am amazing. I'm a gift. I am God's creation. I am the divine essence in this world. Sometimes in our ignorance, we also have been led to believe as we forget that we're spiritual beings, that somehow we're called to suffer. That God really is intended for us to suffer in this world. And we've hoped thereby to discipline ourselves into, so if I could just be good, if I could just be really, really good, you know, maybe God would find favor in my life. And if I could just be somehow, you know, uh, be even a better person than what I am, then maybe I wouldn't be suffering so much and have so much hardship and difficulty. But what we need to know as spiritual beings is that we're already good. You see, you're created in the likeness and image of God, and God don't make no junk. So what you are is created good, created in this image, created in the God's likeness of the goodness that's deep within you. And it's this wonderful spark of the divine that's within us that we need to let out and radiate out in the world. And I say it over and over time and time again. It's not let Jesus in, it's let Jesus out. Come on, we've got to let the God that's already within us, the presence of the divine already within you, release it. Not seeking it to try to come into our lives as if we're trying to reach something with, from without us. We know that we're good, but yes, from time we may choose to make mistakes. But we have the wonderful authority to make a shift, to change, to change our thinking, to rename our experience, to go through these things in a way that we are come back into one accord with the goodness that's already there innately within you. You've always been good. That's one thing I always have said to my children. I have a son. I have a daughter. All of their upbringing, I said, you are innately good. You may make a mistake. You may do something wrong. But your dad will always see the good that's in you. Above any of those errors that have come to you, the journey of your life. And I see that goodness and I call that goodness out. And I want you as my children to see that goodness too. And so it is that the Spirit of God is saying the very same thing to you. You are good. Realize that as, as a spiritual being, you're created like in an image a revelation, and it's all good within you. And in that then, when we begin to understand these things, the mistakes that society and our world wants to buy, have us buy into, and we release them, we understand that we are Christ in our divine nature, our spiritual identity. Our identity means a resemblance. It means our absolute likeness, the condition of being the same. So the Christ in you, is what is alive. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the Apostle Paul writes. Christ in you is your hope of all the possibilities of God unfolding for you. It's when we recognize the Christ within us, that that Christ is not Jesus' last name, that Christ is the awareness of our sonship, of who we are as children of God. In that, we begin to see that in Christ, that the wonderful possibilities in every person and that all things are possible is what's innately within you. And we begin to live from a different perspective then. For what happens when we begin to say, I am a spiritual being, when we identify with that, whoa, our outlook changes completely. We're now looking at the world from a different vantage point. Totally different. I don't know about you, but uh, I've had the experience of uh, looking at the Sears Tower from the street up. I lived in Chicago for a while. Stood at the below. It's now called, I think, the Wils what, Wilson Tire, Willis Tire, Willis Tower now. It's got a different name. But years ago, it was the Sears Tower, 100 stories up. Nothing like standing on the sidewalk and looking up at that immense tower. 
looking up into the clear blue sky and looking for the birds and oh you couldn't even see them it's circling around the top the view was so different and then having the opportunity to rise in the elevator to the very top of the building and to look out totally different vantage I saw the world totally different. Chicago looked so different. I looked down upon the birds instead of looking up upon the birds. I looked down upon the city and all the people below. I looked up uh, in a way from the heavens looking down versus from the earth looking up. This is what happens in our lives. When we begin to recognize, I'm a spiritual being. That's who I am. I'm a soul. I'm a divine creation. That's who I really am. And my vantage point of this world now is changed. My perspective is so different. There's a transformation that happens in our lives where we no longer think now from limitations. Why? Because we're now in lifted up into a different vantage point, a heavenly realm rising up now knowing that we are spiritual beings. We now see the world through spirituality. And in spirituality, there are no limitations. There are no boundaries. There are, there's nothing holding you back. There's no wall in the realm of spirituality where the divine is everywhere. We say there's not a spot where God is not, right? And so it is that the spirit, the very presence of God within us is allowing us to live a realm, live in the realm of the kingdom of God where there are no boundaries, there are no limitations. We're not bound to the physical anymore but we're liberated by the knowledge of this spiritual. We're no longer in any kind of physical bondage because we now look to say, you know, the doctors may have said, you're sick and you only got so many days to live. But in the spiritual realm, you know you're living eternal life. This body may fail, but your spirit lives on. You'll all go on in eternal essence. There's no bondage. There's no boundaries. There's no limitation to you whatsoever. It's this wonderful experience where you're leaving your Egypt. Yes, you know how in the Bible, the story of the children of Israel are imparting in an exodus to leave their bondage of slavery, to now move out to the promised land? You know the story. But that story is your story. The story is our story. You see, when we awaken to this truth, we are every day packing up. Come on, let's get ready to go. We're getting ready to move. We're moving out of bondage. Come on, everybody, let's travel together. We're going on out. We're leaving our Egypt. We're leaving our bondage. We're leaving all those things that hold us back in a realm of limitations and saying, it's not possible. It's never going to work out. It's not going to be there for you. You can't do these things. And we're moving out of that realm and we're going into our wilderness and into that wilderness, just like the children of Israel, we're being led by the divine that makes a way for us. And we're able to cross our Red Seas and find the waters part for us. We're able to realize that in the midst of the desert, manna is there coming from the heavens to feed us. We're able to realize that though we may be thirsty, the rock has been broken and waters pour out. And we realize that we're able to walk across the River Jordan and enter into a promised land. You see, that's a different way of thinking, isn't it? It's a different way of outlook. You're no longer in limitation and bondage. All things are possible in God. This is the beautiful thing for us and a wonderful truth for us to live out in our lives. The kingdom of heaven, where is it? Here and now. A lot of people think, well, wait a minute. It's going to be sometime when I die. It's going to be another time in another place. But the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, don't look high or low. Don't look here or there for it. It's here and now. It's in this moment. In that moment when you realize I'm a spiritual being and this physical world around me, all of its limitations, all of its challenges, all the evil, all the separation, I don't have to be part of it. I'm liberated. I'm set free. I'm dwelling in the realm of heaven, the realm of all good, the realm of God, the goodness of God. That's where I'm walking. Ever stopped anybody on the street corner and said, hey, you want to go with me to heaven today? Whoa, they might go, what are you talking about? You got a gun? What you? What? I, come on with me to heaven today. I'm in heaven right now. I'm in the divine presence. I understand I'm a spiritual being and I'm dwelling in the presence of God. The presence of God is here. 
right now. I'm in heaven. Come join me. Come join me in this understanding of this truth that who we are, it's a knowing that we say over and over again. It's a confidence that we have within our lives that simply says, I'm a spiritual being and I'm walking the streets of gold. I love that because as a child, I can remember all the Sunday school teachers talking constantly about heaven, pearly gates, golden mansions, golden walls, golden streets. Wait a minute. As a little kid, I thought, I don't want to go there. Everything's gold. How gaudy. Ooh, look, you know, that didn't appeal to me at all. Wait, I don't see any trees. Nobody talks about birds. Nobody's talking about a sky. Everybody's talking about gold, 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 gold. Everything's gold, and we're going to walk on streets of gold. And that's all we're going to be doing is walking around, talk, hey, yes, looking good in gold. Hey, gold looks good on you. Uh, you know, hey, love your wings. Those are great. Where'd you get them? Uh, you know, I, I love your halo. It's gold. I love everything. You know, we kind of look around and everything seemed to be gold, right? What were they writing about? It's not really that the kingdom of heaven is just a gaudy place of golden mansions, street. But awareness that when you come into this truth, that you are a spiritual being having this human experience, you are the child of God having this wonderful awareness that who you are as a divine essence, you are walking on prosperity. You're walking on the blessings of God. You're walking on the goodness of God. And how can I picture it any better than walking on streets of gold? That's right. When you realize that you're a spiritual being, you're saying every footstep is walking in the heavenly realm and I see golden streets below me. I see a pathway set up before me of the divine prosperity of blessing of God making a way when there seems to be no way. I walk as if I'm in the angelic realm and I am walking in into this wonderful realm of all kinds of abundance of God. There's no limitation because the streets are paved with gold in my life. That's the outlook of living heaven here and now. It's this wonderful awareness that we live then in a confidence of knowing I'm a spiritual being with no limitations, no boundaries. All things are possible, and that's my lifestyle. For this is a place, and this we know. Amen.